all right today we are going to do something called the point curry instead method now point curry's name you will see many times a very great man this is a method that is a perturbation method for finding periodic solutions where the time period is unknown okay so um, this will involve a stretching of time something that we did in the previous uh, lecture with the um, duffing oscillator because the frequency was different from the purely resonant frequency so let me start with a simple example x double dot plus x plus epsilon x cube equals zero you must understand the nature of periodic solutions. You can't look for a periodic solution meaningfully if there are no periodic solutions. And if there are periodic solutions, then you must still understand what sort of periodic solutions there are. So for this system, every solution is periodic. What does this mean? This means the amplitude is indeterminate this is an autonomous system what does this mean this means the phase is indeterminate indeterminate AT. all right But it is a small perturbation. It is a small perturbation of the harmonic oscillator. And so we can think of omega as 1 plus epsilon omega 1 plus epsilon squared omega 2 plus dot dot dot. The omega 1, omega 2, etc. are constants. They are not functions of time but dependent on amplitude we are going to allow this in ways that will be clear soon and that accounts for the unknown periodic solution okay the amplitude a is a free parameter All right very good the phase is indeterminate and so we will start with the solution x of 0 equals a x dot of 0 equals 0 that fixes the phase all right so remember the solution has one free parameter there we will try to find the time period through this the time period is going to be 2 pi over omega and these will have to be found by us and the way we will find it is procedurally we will do something that is called eliminate secular terms and philosophically if you don't mind my saying so philosophy is a big word but philosoph philosophically what we will do is we will insist 
on finding a periodic solution. So whatever we need to do within the framework of the method in order to find the periodic solution, we will do those things. Okay. So we come here now and here is our system x double dot plus x plus epsilon x cube equals 0 and I will say omega is equal to 1 plus epsilon omega 1 plus dot 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 and I will say tau equals omega t and I will say the solution in tau time is 2 pi periodic. Okay? All right. The way we proceed is like this. x is a function of time, but I am writing x as a function of tau later. How does this even work? To do this, let me acknowledge that I am abusing notation. Okay, So we are being a bit careless with notation. How? So think of an arbitrary function f of x, y is equal to square root of x square plus y square. Now many engineering students, if we then ask them what is f of r theta, many will say r. But that's not true. Actually f of r theta is equal to um, square root of r square plus theta square because that is the definition of this function. right? So what we really mean is that f of x and y is some other function of r and theta, right? where x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta, and therefore f of x and y is equal to, um, let me see now, it is equal to f of r cos theta r sin theta, right? We can write that if we want. Or we can say f tilde of r theta is equal to f tilde of square root of x square plus y square tan inverse y by x, etc. We can do things like this. But usually, when we make a change of variables, we drop this because we make the change once and we never come back. So also, over here, when I say that tau is equal to omega t, if I say tau is equal to omega t, which I have done here, then when I come here, if I write x of t, then I should, strictly speaking, write x of tau by omega. But I define that to be x tilde of tau. Okay? Therefore, dx dt is equal to, um, let's see now, it is equal to x tilde prime of tau d tau dt and d tau dt is omega and so this is x tilde prime omega and with abuse of notation with abuse of notation we write x dot 
omega if we understand what we are doing and our audience understands what we are doing then it is all right okay good let us now come here so we have x double dot plus x plus epsilon x cube is equal to zero and now we say let tau be omega t so we are stretching time omega equals 1 plus epsilon omega 1 plus epsilon square omega 2 plus dot 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 these are to be found and so what we have is this But like I said, maybe we can have a tilde on top to emphasize that this is strictly speaking a different function. But finally, we will drop this tilde and remove this and just put a double dot for convenience. Okay, now let me go to Maple and show you how the calculation works. All right, so here we are. What I will do is I will say n two. I will say omega is equal to one plus add w k times epsilon to the power k k equals one to n. I will say my differential equation is equal to om omega square times the derivative and I am writing x of t but it is that tau variable please remember I don't think it is so confusing that you cannot deal with it plus x of t plus epsilon times x of t cubed very good that's my differential equation okay so it's got this stuff here and this stuff that's the whole equation now I will say x approximate is equal to add capital X k of t times epsilon to the power k k equals 0 to n <coughs> this is the approximate solution Okay, these are still functions of time, but they are functions of the stretched time, what I was in calling tau in the earlier part of the lecture. Okay, so now I will say DEA is equal to expand substitute x of t equals xa in DE. Of course, this will be a long expression. I don't want to keep all these higher order terms, so what I will do here is convert. Taylor and then over here I will write epsilon n plus 1 polynomial okay so now you see here is the unperturbed part and this is the order epsilon part and this is the order epsilon square part and over here you will find omega 1 appears which will be solved for at this order and over here omega 2 appears and it will be solved for at this order second order and so on okay that will be solved for at second order and so on again from the initial conditions we know the amplitude is a and the initial rate is 0 and so what we can do is we can directly substitute x naught of t is equal to a cosine of t and so we will say x a is equal to substitute x naught of t equals a times the cosine of t in x a so we've got that that's how far we've got the solution okay remember that the amplitude in our case is a parameter 
it is not undetermined. For example, for the Van der Poel oscillator, we would be trying to find out what A is. Over here, we are specifying A. Okay. So now we will also say DEA is equal to expand substitute capital X zero of T equals A times the cosine of T in DEA. <coughs> but I will say collect for epsilon. Okay, all right. Now you see that there is only a first order term and a second order term. Now what I will do is I will say temp is equal to ODE45. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> COEFF. <laughs> sorry. DEA epsilon 1. All right. And you see here there is a cosine cube. I have to fix that. I can't have cosine cube because I have to look for resonant terms. And so what I will do is I will say temp is equal to combine temp trig. Okay. And now you see there is no sine t term. So there is no resonant term there, but there is a cos t term and a cos t term here. Okay. And that resonant term cannot be tolerated because if it is there, then this will have a linearly growing solution. And so all I have to do now is I have to say temp 1 is equal to the coefficient in temp of cos t. Okay. When I do that, I've got something over here. I will say solve that for w1 that's w1 it doesn't give with an equal so i'll have to uh, put it myself but it doesn't matter omega is equal to substitute w1 equals no wait a second let me say temp2 is equal to so then over here I'll be able to say temp 2 in omega. So that part got taken care of. You see the time got taken care of. All right. And then I have to say DEA is equal to expand substitute W1 is equal to temp 2 DEA. And then I will say collect epsilon okay so there's a problem there um, let's see now this should be all right that should be all right there should be another one here okay all right, this part is still not solved. I still have to solve for x1. Okay, so then I come here and I say temp is equal to the coefficient in DEA of epsilon 1. And then I say D solve temp. But I have initial conditions. So I say x1 of 0 equals 0, dx1 of 0 equals 0, and I solve this for x1 of t. I should give it a name. Okay, so that's the answer, x1 very good. Then what I do is I say x a is equal to substitute temp 1 in x a and I say d e a is equal to expand substitute 
temp1 in DEA and then I say collect for epsilon and with luck our order epsilon terms will be gone they are not gone yet and so what I will do is after expand I will say combine trig let's just go back to the start and run it through once okay so now it is order epsilon square only all right now we say temp 2 is equal to the coefficient DEA of epsilon 2 okay and then I say the coefficient in the previous of cosine of t and then I say temp 3 is equal to solve that for omega 2 and that's what omega 2 is okay so then I come back here and I say omega is equal to substitute temp sorry omega 2 equals temp 3 in omega okay and so I have got the time period up to this order and in this way I can uh, proceed let me go back here and change the equation a bit so let me make it minus and put a 6 here so that is the first expansion for the sin sinusoidal part you see so you remember there was a 1 16th let us see if we get that you see so that's the 1 16th okay you can think of uh, you can think of this epsilon also as a bookkeeping term or a term that keeps track of terms a quantity that keeps track of terms that we want to treat as small in that case you can come here and set that epsilon equal to um, one again thinking that it is the amplitude that is small these are games that we sometimes play and then you will see that this works out for what we had for the pendulum